Okay. Okay, folks. Uh, Paul, can you just give him a microphone, please? Thank you. Thanks very much. Hi, Kenny. What's the overriding emotion after that? Um, I think it was a tough, it was always going to be tough for us, but I don't know if everybody realises, but England haven't conceded a goal in the last three years of proper football, like the Euros and the World Cup. And we've played them four times. Uh, six nil was the first one. Next one was five nil. Next one was four nil, and then next one was five nil. Um, that's an average of five goals, five, four or five nils. But they're averaging over the period nine nils, nine nils. They haven't considered a goal. Uh, so that's how much further up the ladder they are from us. Um, I thought our organisation was excellent tonight. We put them into a position of nullification. Uh, they got a deflected goal, then they got another deflected goal. But they were the better team, obviously. And uh, I was proud of the players and how they adapted to how we set up. They were fantastic. They give everything, and I must say, uh, I was really impressed with uh, how we stuck to our task, and we created two or three, four chances—not not chances, but you know, half chances—and that reflected on us. We tried to be, um, we didn't play out as much as we would have normally, because they're too good for us. They're too, they're too good for us, and. Uh, it would be a massive failure if they didn't win this tournament because they're home and hosed. I think you all see that yourselves. Everybody else should just go home <laughs> <laughs> because England have, in every position, will, we, if I look at every position in England or in the tournament, if you were picking a team of the tournament as from now, from what we've seen, Northern Ireland have the best left back in the tournament, and we've also the best centre back in the tournament. Uh, Demi Vance at left back, and Sarah McFadden as their centre half. There's nobody better in this tournament than those two. But two's not enough. You know, we have to try and develop players to make them reach those standards. Looking ahead, Kenny, you'll now be planning for the games against Latvia and Luxembourg off the back of this massive high of qualifying for a major finals as fourth seeds. What tools do you now need as manager to, to keep this momentum going for Northern Irish women's football? Well, we have to be adaptable. Uh, we we didn't get enough friendlies, which, and we lost. The bad luck was unbelievable, losing their striker. Uh, and the way she plays was our linkage between the midfield and attack. It restricted us restricted us in uh, the final third of the pitch. So that was a big, big blow for us, losing uh, Simone. But uh, <laughs> looking at the bigger picture, we will be endeavouring to get as much gate time with the game as the young players need as we work on the development programme. In the three years that we've been here, where there was two years activity, um, we have moved up massively up up the echelons of European football. What did you learn about yourself, your players, at, at a level like this? Well, we learned from playing against teams like England, you know, and playing in a way in which we're trying to get better all the time. And that's our policy. Getting better never stops. And we keep working at it and working at it. And maybe one day we'll score a goal against England. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. Andy, great. 
Uh, hi, Kenny. Um, just on the scenes at the end, now obviously there's a natural disappointment at losing the match, but how much do you think the players deserved that moment, sort of with singing in unison with the, the, the fans? Because it was quite touching, and I think even England players stopped the applaud at one point. Yes, UEFA has stopped us. Uh, we're not allowed to go into the crowd, and the crowd's not allowed to come onto the pitch, which is okay. Uh, we can understand and appreciate that. So we couldn't get right close enough to our families and our and and the supporters. But I don't think anyone can argue that Northern Ireland have the best supporters in the world. And you know the tradition that they have developed, uh, small country. Out singing 30,000 English people. Uh, ours was heard from the dugout. I heard ours f far more than I heard England tonight. Their support is unreal. But maybe I was listening to English people when I was, I thought it was our song that they stole. Um, but I thought it was ours that was singing. So maybe that I mistakenly <laughs> didn't realize that. But, um, you know, Sweet Caroline was hammered out. They were brilliant and they were behind the players. And, you know, we're very, very blessed to have the support that we have. And do you think that comes back to the bigger picture thing again, that those memories and those scenes will last long beyond these two weeks? They'll last beyond the two weeks, without a doubt. Uh, anybody that's been here, There'll be a, a coming down for the players that they're going back down to. Uh, we have been looked after. Um, Northern Ireland, the players have been looked after to perfection with the hotel in Southampton, with the people of Southampton have been really, really generous with their friendship and we, we respect that so much, and it's helped us through this because we've come in here massively below the level of the other teams in, in the tournament, and they've been very supportive to us, and our own supporters as well, obviously, have given the players a, a tremendous lift. So that will help our development pathway when we go back. <laughs> And just finally, you touched on it there. You know, the reality is the players are going back to part-time jobs. I'm sure after a bit of a break, how big a challenge will it be to repeat this feat? Psychologically, that's going to be tough for them. Um, I, I, I hope that they can readapt again to go back to where they were. It's sad, I know. I, I can't do anything about that. But it would just be great if we could stay in a full-time environment. It would be fantastic for the players. But um, who knows? I would say further down the road, the next generation is, is what I'm looking at now to see if we can get some of them involved. We already have had a lot of the youth development players on board in our sessions. And even in the in the in the profile of the six months they've been in and around us, working with us. So we're trying to prepare for the future. Um, will we reach the standard that England produce? This, that's asking an awful lot. Like uh, England are so far ahead of everybody at this time and at this junction. Uh, I have to say if they don't win the tournament, it would be it would be failure with the best players. So if you have the best players, you have to win. Simple as that. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, let's chop at the back, please. Hi, Kenny. Just one from me. Um, you gave Laura Rafty a start today, a really big moment for her playing in obviously the town that she lives in. Just how big is she for you going forward as well as one of the more experienced players maybe? To, to I, was, I was fully aware of that and uh, Laura's been great. She hasn't had as much game time. When you're competing with Julie Nelson, Sarah Mack, people that got there, it's, you know, we, she didn't get as much game time as her ability would probably warrant. But you have to bake the cake and you need the right ingredients. And 
at times it wasn't right to put her in. I thought now tonight was the right time, and she's, she's answered me. It's great, and and she deserves so much. Thank you. Chap here at the front, please. Hi, Kenny. Um, you've already said about you know Sarah McFadden being a, a superstar at this tournament. You know, I think she's 34, 35 years old. Um, you know, played part-time football most of her career as well. You know, just from this until this, you know, recent spell. Um, you know, I mean, can you go a bit further on? You know, what she's what she's done and brought to the team. Um, you know, because yeah, I agree. She's had a, a great tournament. She's a brilliant competitor. Um, she's a silent assassin. She's unbelievable in terms of, without speaking, if you're in her company, you you warm to her, and she's the same on the pitch. She she leads by her actions on the pitch. She's a superhuman being, and a fantastic player. Who? What age did you say she was? She's just signed a two-year contract, full-time contract, which is testament to what her club thinks about her as well. And um, fantastic, fantastic player. Not only a player, but one who sets examples for the rest of the team. Anyone else, folks? No, that's it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. You. Is that your phone, Kenny?